Desmond, tell me about some of the stories and history of how the, your, your art came to be. Oh, these, uh, the, all of these paintings have a lovely, uh, really mystical story to them. Uh, this one here is a really good example of the, of the principle in quantum physics of how the future can affect the past. Because I named this exhibition um, Passion and Spirit, A Journey into the Light. And uh, that, was, uh, that was like months ago. And this is the painting, Journey into the Light, which I created just before the exhibition started. Oh, really? And, yeah, and, it, uh, and I, didn't, I didn't know. Again, it was a spontaneous thing that just occurred. Oh. And of course, that's what it is. I mean, look it at so it. It so is. It's, yeah. And it's absolutely beautiful. It's stunning. Mm -hmm. And I guess everyone who looks at it will see different things. Like, I see a peacock absolutely. feather in there. Yeah, there's a lot of different things in there that I've noticed. I thought it was finished, mm -hmm. and then a little while later I began to notice things. I noticed there was a shape down at the bottom, which I bodied out into that little guy down there. Yes. And this is a traveler that's traveling towards the light. And I don't know if he's going to live or not, because this vortex is going, is going for him. <laughs> and it could, not be, it could be about, about death. This man might die. Uh -oh. But um, he could escape. He could sneak around the other one, but I don't know if, the, if he's supposed to escape. Right. And then I began to notice a lot of shapes up in the flame. And these are shapes that I created in, in the fury of the moment doing all kinds of uh, techniques with no thought of what was happening. Did you have and music you, playing at the time? Um, I usually have, I have music playing here all the time. Oh, okay. But the moment of that creation, I believe I was too much into my head even. Okay. I don't even know if there was any music. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. But um, I noticed all these shapes around. There's all these figures in the flame. And I'm starting, I'm just in the process now of bodying those, fl those shapes out. There's faces, uh, of what looked like gods and a Christian uh, image, uh, an Oriental image, a Viking image, an owl. Very, you know, you, very universal. Very universal. Yeah, L religion is a language, and we speak different languages in religion, but they're all pointing at the same thing. You know, they're not really meant to uh, be any kind of um, definition of reality. They're they are, uh, a metaphor, an envisioning of what reality is. And in the hidden in the core of all religions are wonderful, wonderful truths. So Desmond, tell us about the monk painting. I call it uh, the, uh, the f I've called it many things, the fulcrum, the pilgrim's return. It was mo made on the day that I decided to move out fully into the light. And it's really ex a good example of, the, of some of the magic that happens in the painting because all of the monks in that painting happened in three strokes of a palette knife, just like that. In, in that length of time, all, there's about seven monks oh, in, the, wow. in, the, uh, in, in the painting. I fancied up the main character, but all the rest are just uh, pristine the way they were uh, with maybe a hint of shading here and there to, def to, uh, to define them. Is that, and when you say your journey or your move into the light, yes. just uh, quickly, what does that mean? I wasn't always a good boy. Uh, 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 I had my issues and I lived in, with one foot in each world, uh, not believing in the kind of magical world which I now know to exist uh, and not, you know, like believing it and not believing it at the same time. And you really have to make a decision about what you want to believe in life, what you think reality is. Yes, and, and just live it. And that's the moment that I made that decision to come out and die. Oh, and curiously wow. enough, as I was scumbling the sky, putting in clouds, I pulled away the, the rag I was using and um, the face of a god was in, in the sky. Oh, there's, my there's an eye, and there was the eye, the eye cavity, the nose was already shaped with the mouth, and all I had to do was put in the other eye. And I was like, holy, it was like, whoa! Wow. <laughs> well, that's, that's really, when you see, consider what the painting's about, that's exactly what should have happened. And it was a magical, I didn't intend it at all. So that's an, another yeah. example of, of uh, how magic insinuates its way into, uh, yes. and it's into such my painting. A, such an extension of you. Would Absolutely. you ever sell that painting? They're all for sale. Yeah. And so is it hard to sell some of these? Because they are so connected to you. For some reason, I'm not having a problem letting them go. I, I feel as if they, are, uh, they have a destiny of their own, oh. and they will go out into the world, and, and they, will, uh, they are magical. They will change yeah. the people who own them, because there's an energy to them. Well, you're a good and parent. I am. You're setting your children free. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, and I don't really own them. They are their own. That's really neat. You're, like, it's, I hear that you're complete with them. Now, yes. what about the one with the, the rain? The rain oh, and another example example Lilies. of coincidence. I was, I had this wet canvas I was carefully taking outside because I had, had to do some special effects with it and I brought it into the garage and carefully put it down and then all of a sudden, you know, it was raining out and then all of a sudden this huge wad of water just went splash <gasps> of the painting and I'm going, oh no. But then I sort of realized, I had begun to realize then that um, reality, like God intercedes in the world and through accidents he actually does something. That's his way of getting into this world. Because that's life, and, right? Yeah. So I began to notice how the, the water was rivulating through the, the painting and it was all these gorgeous textures were coming out of it, you know, when it dug into and mixed in with the rain. 
And okay. so okay. I just accepted it. And, th and then I went outside and I began dancing in the rain yeah. to say, yes, yeah. yes, 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 create it with me. Uh, oh, God, so you, you gave know. over, you surrendered, you oh, celebrated yeah, yeah. it. And that's what created all the lovely little rivulets in the, in the painting. They, that's gentle raindrops. It was a lovely, yeah. fine, gentle rain that day. You know, it's neat to share that technique, mm -hmm. which was a natural occurrence. Yeah. Almost they, Nietzsche says chaos gives birth to dancing stars. Yes, you know? exactly. <laughs> but yeah. um, I do know you actually have some other techniques, which we aren't going to share on the show, They're, but yeah. they are unique to you. Utterly unique. As far as I know, yeah. nobody else is, is doing them because they occurred out of accidents about the unique way that I lived due to, due to the fact that I was a carpenter at one time and, uh, and accidents happened and this technique uh, was shown to me. And years and years later, uh, I made use of it here. Now to wrap up, because we want to give okay. the, the viewers your contact info, mm -hmm. the picture with the eagle here, that's fabulous. That's, uh, In a nutshell, what's oh, that? Oh, it's a lovely uh, one. That, that, um, at the time I, I did this, my world was collapsing. I had lost the right to, to, to live in this ashram where I was uh, stayed for a year before this In India? Year. No, actually here, up here in Toronto, just north of the city. And anyway, uh, my world was collapsing and I needed a refuge. I had was lost a place and I had felt, and that bird is looking for a place to land, and that's really kind of me, looking for a place to land. And this was just before this gallery coalesced into existence. Oh, look at so, that. Yeah, so yeah, that's almost like, your, uh, I don't know what you want to say, that was like the messenger bird. Yeah, it's like a... Neat. I mean, it's a... Good a, omen. Yeah, it's a good omen or whatever. <laughs>